Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks and snowstorm perverts across the Middle Atlantic region. I'm meteorologist DT from weatherist.com, the annual local evil scientist. We're here to talk about the upcoming uh, snowstorm threat for Sunday and Monday, which in my opinion is increasing, not decreasing, even though many of the meteorologists in both uh, NWS and the TV stations around the Middle Atlantic region uh, seem to have no idea what to do with this system. And by the way, yes, I am still the Colonel of Chaos, the Captain of Catastrophe, the Commander of Confusion. I did not get promoted, or demoted for that matter. All right, let's talk a look what's going on here. First, we're going to start here by taking a look at this image. And um, this is from um, uh, the Capital Weather Gang here uh, for uh, yesterday. And you can see this is yesterday's headline. Now, I told the uh, talked to Jason about this over at Capital. I told him not to write, but anyway, they did. They wrote this, and they, of course, now they said it's markedly decreased. And of course, if the system comes up and develops like today's data shows, this is not going to age very well. So this was a big mistake to do. It really was. In any event, okay. Uh, we met, in the last video, we talked about the two different types of East Coast snowstorms. Everybody remember that? Now, remember, there are two types. There's the types where the redevelops, it comes in from the Midwest, and it redevelops here and then it jumps a new low here. This is called the type uh, uh, Miller B scenario here and then it jumps to the coast. This is what we had on March 1st and a uh, second I should say and the one we had on uh, Monday uh, yeah uh, March 4 5 so that's what that was. Then there's the second one which is the southern track low which does this sort of comes up from the Gulf and this is called the Miller A. And to show you this in more detail, we talked about this in the last video. Here are the two different types. Again, so this is the um, this is type B. When you can see the primary low is in the Midwest, Kentucky, Ohio, Pennsylvania. It goes here and then it jumps. This one dies and a new low forms here. This is what we had uh, back on Monday and again on March 2nd. The two big storms that hit the Northeast. The one on March 2nd with the huge winds and tremendous wave and damage to the coast of New England. Now this is the one coming up here for the 11th and 12th. This is a southern low coming out of the south and you'll see that as we go through the weather maps here. So this is a totally different type of system. So don't confuse the two. Somebody's going to tell you this is just like we saw. No, it's not. It, that, that's bullshit. Okay, it's just not. And so remind you of the differences. Again, this is the storm we had from December 2000 and you can see the very sharp cutoff on these uh, Miller B systems that come out of the Midwest. Very sharp cutoff in the snow line here. Very sharp cutoff in the snow line here. 26 to 30 inches here, Allentown uh, 4. Amazing. So and we had that, we were this storm. So same sort of thing. Okay. Uh, this was the February uh, the 1969 uh, Lindsay Day snowstorm. Same sort of thing. Okay. This was the map we had from on, uh, on Monday. And you can see this is the primary low forming right here. And it dies and the coastal low took over here classic Miller B secondary redevelopment type of East Coast winter storm. And this was the upper air map. Look where the upper low is. You can see the negative tilt, very strong low here. Okay, there's our blocking feature. Okay, and there's the upper low. I see how it goes negative and tilt, low develops and it intensifies here. That's what the upper pattern looked like. All right. Now this is the current pattern. Let's take a look at the differences. First, we still have our block. The Omega block, the Rex block is still here. That's a Rex block. Here's our large 50-50 low over southeastern Canada. This feature and this feature are connected. They feed off each other. This is the southern low here. And it's going to dive down this way. So this is a southern system. Now, let me clear this out. This is what happens at, at uh, 72 hours. Now, this is Monday morning. This is the new European model. And you can see what happens here. This feature is still there. The Rex block is still there. And because of it, the low that develops here cannot come up the coast. That cannot happen. It has to take an east-northeast track. So even though, you know, you'll see those meteorologists out there from, still trying to tell you this is going up the East Coast. That's bullshit. That's not, that's not going to happen. And it can happen for this reason. And we can also see another factor here as well, which is uh, this factor here. You see this other upper low? This is going around the Rex block. Here's the Rex block, remember? And as a result, it crushes the top of the system. This feature coming in here crushes the top of the system here. 
Remember, forecasting is a science. It's not what you want to happen. It's what's going to happen. Not the same thing. Sure enough, here's the European model. Remember, we saw that. There's the upper low. Okay, remember this feature here. Now look what happens when I clear this out. Go to the next slide. See how it drops into Michigan? It's preventing this system from turning the corner. It cannot do this. That cannot happen. Not with this system coming in. It's going to kick it to the east. Okay, so there we go. As I said the other day, it will be the position, shape, and intensity of the Omega block that will determine how far northeast or east northeast or even east the Carolina low is going to go on Sunday night, the 11th into the 12th. Okay, uh, now we looked at this image here before. We saw this, this is the feature that develops the low pressure area. And this it forms right here. This is from the Friday European. So again, we can clearly see that Rex block very powerful and it's locked in position. So that is the key to the whole situation. All right, now let's start from the beginning. Now, first, this is Saturday, Saturday, tomorrow. There is a weak upper air disturbance coming through here, which is going to bring snow to portions of Kentucky, West Virginia, and Southwest Virginia, and maybe even to the Southern Virginia, Piedmont, Richmond, and Point South. Snow and or rain, depending what the temperature is. Okay, so this is at um, uh, 7 a.m., excuse me, 6 a.m., I should say, and this is at 11 a.m. on Saturday morning. This little feature reinforces the cold air that comes in for Sunday. It is a big deal. Okay, so if it happens tomorrow, don't go, why is it happening now? This no, no, it's not. It's just a little light snow and rain. Okay. This is the 12Z GFS, which was a mess, an absolute disaster. And the problem is that the GFS, being a piece of crap, as it usually is, now sees this feature and this feature. And the two pieces of energy in the jet stream, and it can't figure out which one's the real one. So while the model initially developed some snow over Virginia, Richmond, Charlottesville, Roanoke, Lynchburg, the Shenandoah Valley, it loses it. The system flies apart. And you'll see that in just one second. The problem with the GFS is this. This is southern piece of energy here. It's all sheared apart. This is, it overdoes this. See how strong and deep this is? Look where the upper low goes down into the Great Lakes. Now, if we go back to the European, that's not there. The upper low is way up to up here. So the GFS is simply overdoing, the 12Z GFS was overdoing this, this whole feature, excuse me, was overdoing this whole feature, pushing it too far to the south and east. So that's why the model screwed it up. Okay. And sure enough, if you look at the ensembles, we can see two clusters of the spreads. Notice there's a bunch of low pressure areas here and another bunch here. And the GFS doesn't know if that's real or if that's real. And the end result is, this is a, uh, now for this is a 66 hours early Monday morning, we have two areas of low pressure. Which one's the storm? Don't know. So that's what the GFS, that's why. So it, GFS this morning, this afternoon, midday, threw a lot of confusion into this. Now, this here's a 12 is a UKMET model, a British model, which I posted on the Facebook page earlier. And you can see this is a Sunday morning. Here's the low. This is, uh, excuse me, this is Monday morning, March 12th. So low is here. This is 1 o'clock, 9.93 off of Hatteras or maybe Elizabeth City. And then finally 9.83. Not a super monster storm, but look at that track. Okay, so that's a pretty good track also for southern New Jersey as well as maybe southeastern Massachusetts. But for the northeast, north of D.C., that's not a big hit. That doesn't mean no snow, just not a big hit. Okay. And this is the precipitation. And you can see how the precipitation is pretty significant. This is the half-inch line. So let's let's call this up. You can see it. The beginning of the blue and the green, that's a half-inch of liquid, potentially five or six inches of snow. And you can see it's right across here, just south of D.C., then up towards Baltimore a little bit, four-tenths up towards Baltimore. So D.C. is like the three-tenths, four-tenths of an inch, which is a few inches of snow. And if this is all snow in the, in the southern half of the Shenandoah Valley, that's six or eight inches of snow, potentially. So the, the British model has a pretty good storm there. Then later on, here came the Canadian model. Look at this baby. One o'clock on Monday afternoon, March 12th. Boom! That's a nice looking coastal storm. That's a big snowstorm for Virginia and, 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 and Maryland and Delaware, southern Pennsylvania, southern New Jersey, even now snow up into New York City. And also notice that the snow shield goes back to the, into western Virginia like here. That's pretty impressive. So that, that's a big deal as well. 
what the point here is that all these models are increasing, showing a bigger system, not a weaker one, not a flatter one, a bigger one. Now, this is the new European, which came out this afternoon at 130. And you can see the low is a bit stronger. Not, not a great low, not a tremendous low, but definitely a system here, a lot stronger. Remember, 24 hours ago, 24 hours ago, the European had sunny over all this, had no low pressure at all. So this is a big step. This is a big increase in chase increase here. And if we look at the uh, we, the precipitation amounts and what it looks like, we can see this here. Operationally European. Now the purple line is the rain snow line. Okay. So this is four o'clock on Monday morning. Again, this is delayed. This is later than we thought. Four o'clock Monday morning. It's got the snows just about into Richmond, a moderate snow in Roanoke, Glensburg, back into here, and then rain all in the south down to here. One o'clock, 11 a.m. Excuse me, 11 a.m. Monday morning, moderate snow to Richmond, heavy snow in Greensboro, northwest of North Carolina, moderate snow, Roanoke, Lynchburg, light snow up past Charlottesville to D.C., and that continues Monday 4 p.m., right to D.C. area, down to Charlottesville, Roanoke, and then moderate snow again, Richmond, Farmville, Middle Peninsula, Northern Neck, all up and through here on Monday afternoon, Monday morning. So, again, not a huge storm, but a definitely a step up the coast from what we saw on the early Friday morning. European and the one on Thursday afternoon. Trends, people, trends. Now, here's the European ensemble. Very similar to this, but you look where the low is. It's just by Wilmington in here. The low is a little further north. Okay, just to remind you in case you don't know where Wilmington is, this is Wilmington here. So the low is off the coast of Wilmington here. So this is a little further north. There's the rainstone line. And again, you can see the moderate precipitation just south of DC into central Delaware. And that's, this is all mostly snow for everybody in Virginia here. Roanoke, Lynchburg, Northwest Virginia, Charlottesville, Fredericksburg, Stafford, the Northern Neck, Richmond, especially north and west of Richmond, Farmville, Martinsville. That's what that looks like to me. And if we look at it in more detail, which we will, now this is Sunday. And now this is a delay. Notice here, now Sunday afternoon we have clouds coming in, which reduce our sunshine on a warming. After all, it is only early March. And you can see the cloud line. This is light precipitation, so the clouds are probably up like this already. And this is the rain snow line Sunday at 7 o'clock, just over Richmond, Lynchburg, Roanoke. So this is all rain, rain in Tennessee, rain in western, ten, uh, western North Carolina, rain in Raleigh. And then this is all light snow in here, this sort of stuff, light snow in here. Okay, that's 7 o'clock. Now by 4 o'clock Monday morning, the rain snow line has crashed southward significantly. You see that? It's moved south of Richmond. So all of this is now all snow. Moderate snow in Charlottesville, Richmond, Lynchburg, uh, Hot Springs, Beckley, Bluefield, uh, Whitefield, Martinsville, uh, uh, Lynchburg, Farmville. Yeah. And the snow line has got up to north of D.C. into the Pennsylvania border area by the Pennsylvania Turnpike. Okay. Snowing in eastern Kentucky, uh, northeastern Tennessee, potentially. Uh, so it's Monday morning, 7 a.m., uh, again, Richmond's all snow. The snow line is pushed now between Richmond and Norfolk. It's get over Greensboro. So that means Hickory and Asheville's got snow. And then all southwest Virginia's all snow. The entire Shenandoah Valley from Harrisonburg southward. Moderate snow into Beckley. That's a decent looking that's a decent looking snow map, folks. And then um, this is Monday afternoon, one o'clock. It's still going on. Yeah. Moderate snow line is up to DC, just south of it. Certainly St. Mary's, up towards and maybe Annapolis. Uh, Salisbury, Dover's getting into it. Richmond is still moderate snow. It's ending. It's still light snow in Charlottesville, Lynchburg, growing up, but it's coming to an end. And then finally, it's Monday, 7 p.m., the rain snow line actually moves through Norfolk, and this could be moderate snow over the northern neck and middle peninsula, and then into uh, Salisbury on the lower Maryland eastern shore. And to give you an idea of what this looks like on the ensemble mean, in terms of snowfall, there. Now, this is not a big snow, according to this. But it's not nothing. Second, the trend, the trend, the trend. It's going up. And again, you can see the really good snow in the Shenandoah Valley, especially south of, let's say, Staunton, Delaware, down there. So the trend is important here. Now, finally, the 18Z GFS came out. Yay! It gets a clue. Dun, 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 dun. So you can finally see the lows forming here on a decent position. It's got a decent snow shield. It's got one system here, finally, not two. And you can see it in decent snow through uh, Shenandoah Valley, West Virginia, Eastern Kentucky, 
uh, southwest Virginia, Roanoke, all of it getting hit pretty hard up towards Harrisonburg. The snow's about to reach. Monday morning's got snow into Richmond, uh, close to D.C. Okay, but again, it keeps it flat. And then um, this is uh, Monday afternoon. There you go. It's up towards D.C. It's in Richmond, the entire Virginia Piedmont. Greensboro's gone over the snow as the low pulls away and the temperatures crash. Now, of course, you have to worry about March sunshine and so on and so forth, but we'll get to that as we get closer to the storm. And if you look at the GFS Ensemble, again, notice the difference here, folks. One big cluster of red numbers, which means the model understands what's going on. One big cluster, okay? This is very different from what we saw earlier with that. See the difference? Shitty forecast, low confidence, better forecast. And the GFS 18Z Ensemble showing big snow in southwest Virginia, the southern half of Shenandoah Valley, several inches into Richmond, and then a couple inches up towards D.C., Charlottesville, uh, Fredericksburg. Again, the trend. If you look at the, uh, the precipitation on the 18Z GFS, notice there's not a single member which has any precipitation north of the Pennsylvania-Maryland border. None. Many of it have it south of the Pennsylvania-Maryland border, but nobody north of the Pennsylvania-Maryland border. Okay. Finally, this is something I do with my clients. Uh, you may find it interesting. These are my snow probability maps. And uh, this, this, this is really easy. These are uh, out of uh, uh, percentages here. They should be. Oh, I forgot to change these. How about that? Uh, this should be uh, 1%, uh, 2%, uh, 30%, 40%, all the way up to 50%, 60%. And you can see that the, where the probabilities are here on Harrisonburg, uh, uh, Charlottesville, Culpeper, Richmond. So Richmond right now, I think that's the highest probability of seeing two to four inch snows, about 40% up here. And then uh, Lynch, uh, uh, Lynchburg, uh, five to eight inch snows are possible. Uh, Farmville, the same sort of thing here. It's about 30% chance either way. So again, this is out of 100% chances. So these are different possibilities. And you can also, I sent this one out. Um, uh, this is the one for Williamsburg. You can see it here. Again, 10%, uh, 20%, 30%, 40%, 50%, so on and so forth. So, um, and, and for Raleigh, for example, um, if it goes over, it's only be two inches or less high probability that. Winston-Salem, uh, maybe two, maybe three inches of snow possible. Uh, Norfolk, uh, very high probability of snow is going to be under two inches. Williamsburg, the same sort of thing. Martinsville, eh, Bristol, Tennessee, they could get a decent snow here. A uh, 40% chance of seeing up to five to eight inches of snow right now, the way I see it. So there you go. And then finally, summary. Okay, this is coming. It's delayed 12 to 24 hours, but it's coming. Now, light snow, a rain mixture on Saturday, like I told you about, which results in more cold air getting into Virginia, North Carolina, Maryland, West Virginia, Delaware. Uh, now, the, the changes in the models today were dramatic, in my opinion. The one big issue that was causing the most uncertainty was the 12Z GFS and the GFS Ensemble. But the 18Z GFS and the GFS Ensemble fixed that problem. The 12Z Canadian Ensemble and the British model were big today, screaming significant snowstorm for the Mid-Atlantic region. If this was December, January, February, I'd be honking like a son of a gun. Or barking like a son of a gun, snow dog. Uh, and again, the Omega block up there in southeastern Canada means that at best, the big cities from Philly to Boston get a glancing blow. A few inches, possible, but just a glancing blow. Uh, that The exception of that would be southern New Jersey, where they could get several inches of snow. And then also, the trend is for a bigger and stronger low. That The important thing is the trend here. Light precipitation Sunday afternoon comes in Kentucky, uh, from Kentucky into western and central Maryland. It'll be a snow-rain mix. Okay? And then as the temperature falls, we go into nighttime, it changes over. The main event Sunday, let's say from 10 to 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. to Monday, 1 to 4 p.m., depending and ending from west to east, depending on where you are. This is a fairly long time for a night snowfall at March. And this implies that if we have steady moderate snow, the snow amounts could end up going higher in all the models. So keep that in mind. We still have a ways to go yet. The Virginia Piedmont, the Shenandoah Valley, has the best chance of seeing 6 inches or more snow and also the best chance of seeing 8 inches or more snow. Right now, I don't see this as a 10-inch snowfall. Anybody getting that right now? I just don't see that. But somebody in the valley there is going to get six or eight inches of snow. It seems very possible to me. Uh, lastly, well, the rain, it, it, rain might end as snow in central North Carolina, Hampton Roads. It could. We don't know that yet. 
All right, this is meteorologist DT. I'm dead tired. I'm going to take a nap. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to post tonight uh, on the Facebook page or not. I may not. I'm just too tired. I, I might. We'll see. Uh, and if not, I'll catch you early Saturday morning. Talk to you later. See you on the Facebook page and on the Twitter page as always.